Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 24. And Abraham was old, and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Great testimony. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant, and we go back to 15.2, that may be Eliezer. This guy is unnamed. He has no name. Abraham is a type of God the Father. This servant is a type of the Holy Spirit. Isaac is a type of Jesus Christ. Rebecca will be type of church. God will send his spirit out looking for a bride for his son. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit draweth man unto God and the son. That ruled over all his house. Put, I pray thee, the name, thy hand under my thigh. Where do you find a name for the Holy Spirit? God is called Jehovah. Jesus is called Jesus. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Thigh is Abraham sitting. He puts his he, the servant puts his hand under the thigh. The thigh is the strongest muscle in your body. And it also when you sit down it makes a lap. When you stand up you don't have a lap no more. I will make thee swear an oath by the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah. I'm going to make you swear by God of all gods. How important is this servant? If he's Eliezer or whoever he is. He believes in God, Jehovah. Abraham says, listen, of all things, of all the gods in all the world, you're going to pray an oath yourself. To Jehovah. This guy has to believe in God. Abraham wouldn't call. Abraham would not have had him make such an oath. Alright, who is Jehovah? The God of heaven. He's the creator of heaven. He's in heaven. He's abound. His throne is in heaven. And the God of the earth. He's made the earth. Everything thereof is made by God. And Jesus Christ, according to Paul. That thou shalt not take. And we're going to get into some ground here. This will cause hatred. Thou shalt not take a wife unto my son, Isaac, of the daughters of the Canaanites, where he's dwelling. This is where he's living. Now this is experience, first of all, of Abraham. Between him and Hagar. Between Lot and the Egyptian. And Lot and his girls. You don't mess with the daughter of the Canaanites. They're of Ham. Among whom I dwell. Abraham is in a land of people who are Hamites. They are the enemies of God. And Abraham said, you're not going to find a son. You're not going to find a, a bride for my son of these women. Now you may call that as prejudice as you would like. But it's a fair statement also. Number two, we must look at the fact is when we see Abraham and we see Isaac, we see Jacob, and we see Judah. We are seen in, in Matthew 1 and Luke chapter 3, we are seeing the line of the Lord Jesus Christ to be born man. And whatever you think, whoever you think, whatever you believe, Israel was supposed to be a pure race of people. 
Now, some people may well look at Isaac is going to marry his cousin, or I don't know the family relations. It's not incest. No, it's not incest. It's not incest. I want to say incest. I said incest. It's not. No, I can't say it. Incest. This is a pure family breed of one people that will go to Jesus Christ. It is supposed to be a pure breed of people to Jesus Christ. Now, Judah will ruin that. We're going to get Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Judah is going to blow it. They're going to blow it when they go to Babylon. When they come back in Nehemiah and Ezra. But God intended the children of Abraham to be pure. Listen, they said that the Nazis, the Germans, were supposed to be that pure breed of people. No, it's the children of Israel. And what Abraham's telling his servant is, you go find somebody of my family so we can be that one group of people. God already messed it up with Hagar. But thou shalt go unto my country, to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son, Isaac. My, 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 my. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I meant that when he met with Hagar, that was not supposed to be. And you have Ishmael, the pure race. So the Jews start with Abraham and Sarah. And you know they're brothers and sisters. There was supposed to be no Hagar. Isaac was the promised seed. Now here we go. Let's forget Hagar. Let's forget Ishmael. Now we're supposed to go. You're supposed to go back. And remember we, we learned uh, two chapters ago. We learned about uh, Milka. Why was that thrown in there? But here we go. In between that, Sarah died. And the servant said unto him, Preadventure, perhaps, maybe, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. So what happens if I go out and look for a bride and she don't want to come? Free will. What if I go out in the streets and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and they don't want to come? What do I do? Must I need to bring thy son again unto, into the land which whence thou comest? Shall I bring Jesus Christ back from heaven so he can show up and show people who he is? Am I supposed to perform anything that would make it look like Jesus Christ is here in the land? No. Somebody wants to see Jesus. Do I bring Jesus? Do I bring Isaac to the people? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. Jesus Christ has already come. He's already been born. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. You don't bring him back. The next time he comes back, he's not touching the earth. He's going to the skies to meet his bride. We're going to see that in a minute. Or maybe tomorrow. The next time Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, he's coming back to the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back angry. He's coming back to destroy his enemies. I guarantee there's probably people out there. Uh, there was a man in, in Texas. He proclaimed to be the Messiah. He proclaimed to Jesus Christ. It's been all, Jesus said there'll be many that come in my name. No. It's not. The Lord God of heaven. Who took me from my father's house. Oh, see, there's the God that you got to have. That's the one that spoke to Abram. Say, come on out. Come follow me. Get out of that moon God. How do you know it's not Ishmael? How do you know it's not uh, uh, the Saudi Arabian and Arabian God? How do you know it's not Islam? Because God told Abraham, come out from that moon God. Ur was a moon God city. Dedicated to the fortress of the moon god. And God says, come out of her. You come out of her and I'll give you the sun. Capital S-O-N. And from the land of my kindred, Ur Chaldees, which spake unto me that swear unto me, saying, unto thy seed. Notice how Abraham cut out you know, the, the family, the kindred, because he knew he failed. He knew he did wrong. 
Unto thy seed will I give this land, and that's Genesis 12 and further, and he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. So, sir, you're going out and there's an angel going with you. Now, where did you see that? Seven times in the Bible about an angel over a group of people. Revelation 1, 2, and 3. The angel over the churches. Those angels report to the Holy Spirit that, okay, you know, here we are. Here's what people are here. There's now, a, there's now today an angel over the Laodicean church age. That angel goes out somehow as the Holy Spirit goes out and do, does a work. And thou shalt take a wife unto my sons from thence. If the woman will not be willing to follow thee. Give her candy. Give her music. Give her booze. Give her anything you want that she may come. Give her BBS. Give her all kinds of things. This is all a church today. They're going to honor going back to school next week. This weekend they're... Their church is going to have a bounce house and all kinds of, of goodies and that to get the kids ready to go back to school. Really? I just unfriended you and you, and your off my Facebook. You're gone. You, you start involved in that mess, you're gone. In the church, they're going to do time with bounce houses. If the woman will not be willing to follow thee, if you go out there and preach the gospel all the world and they don't want to follow, they want to be the Broadway, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath so when we do the work of god by going out in the gospel and preaching the gospel to the people going all the world and preach the gospel we are also part of the work of the holy spirit going out searching the holy spirit comes to god says listen go out there and look for lost people okay what what do i use to help me god christians well god you know there's very few out there doing it. all right then have them pray that I send laborers. But those that do go labor, when I preach the gospel, where I preach the gospel, in the streets of Daytona Beach, Florida, I am doing the work of the Holy Spirit, looking for the bride for Jesus. And if they won't come, God says to the Holy Spirit, hey, you were faithful in the word of God. You were faithful having that person preach the word of God. That guy is faithful. I'm going to reward that person. But if they don't want to come, then don't give them any more light. Don't give them any more understanding. That's what I preach today. When I preach about Jesus. Thou shalt be cleared from this oath. Alright, so if that woman does not want to come, the oath is done. You're finished. You've done your job. When somebody has been told about Jesus Christ and the gospel, and it's, it's got to be from a Christian, and you reject it, God says to the Holy Spirit, okay, it's fine. You two have done your job. We are doing the work of the Holy Spirit. And when that person rejects, God says, okay, fine. It's, you guys done your job. There is no consolation. There's no condemnation to you. You've done what you're supposed to for, for them, John chapter 3, it's the wrath of God. But only... But uh, man, only bring not my son that are Don't bring Jesus Christ back. He's already came. He's already finished his work. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this, that matter. Okay. He swore by the Lord, the God of heaven, the God of earth. He has to believe in God, Jehovah. And the servant took of all numbers. Ten camels. Ten is a Gentile number. Here's the church. Being put in the body of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Of the camels of his master. Camels. These are Abraham's camels. Ten of them. Probably really associated with Abraham himself. What's camels have to do with this picture? I do not know. I know they're an unclean animal. 
I know you can get one hump or two humps, but why camels mentioned, I don't know. And departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. Do you know somebody else who's like that in the Bible? Let me get let me let me tell you. He was a Jewish man that worked for an Egyptian. His name was Joseph. Why do you keep getting a Jewish person and a Egyptian together in the Bible? The first man that was truly saved by a Christian's work today of grace through believing in the Lord Jesus Christ alone was the Egyptian eunuch. He had no children. So before his salvation, he couldn't produce any Christians. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. He made his camels to kneel down. That's funny because uh, Psalms 23 says he maketh the sheep to lie down. Without the city. He's not in the city. He's outside the city. By a well of water. That's interesting. John chapter 4. Wow, don't you see Jesus Christ showing up? At the time of the evening, around 6 p.m., even the time that women go out to draw water. You're going to see John chapter 4 here. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham. See how humble you're not my you're my God. I, I'm praying to you. I put an oath to you, but I'm not worthy to be called your servant. I'm coming in the name of Abraham, God the Father type of. I pray thee. He's gonna pray. Send me good speed this day. Let me, you know, let's let's have something good here. Let's make Abraham happy, please. I'm his servant. I'm his good servant. I want to do what Abraham wants. And show kindness unto me, the servant. No. Show kindness unto my master, Abraham. When we go out and witness and do the work of God, it's not, oh, Lord, help us. To do no, Lord, help us that you may be glorified. You may be blessed by someone coming to Jesus Christ and putting their faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's what I pray. Lord, may somebody today turn to your son and reverence your son. Behold, I stand here by the well of this water, well of the water. Not like God's not going to know that. <laughs> He's telling God where he is. Remember God told remember God when he came to Adam, Adam, where art thou? The servant says, Lord, I'm right by this well. Here I am. And the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. All right. It's about that time the women come. Notice how he shows up right at the right time when the women will come out. And let it come to pass. Now, this guy is going to put a fleece out for the Lord. You think Gideon's fleece was, you know, Lord... You know, let it be dry, and then let this be wet, and let this be wet now, and let it, let it be dry. Do you think that was a fleece? This guy, he says, I am at this well. Let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, all right, got to be a woman. He's not going to find a man for Isaac. Got that? I got to say that in 2017. He says, I'm going to find a woman for Isaac. <laughs> Bringing the Bible up to date. I wonder what the modern Bibles say about that. You do know that some modern Bibles change the male and female identities. To whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. All right, here's, I'm looking for a woman for this, for my son's, for my master's son. And I'm going to speak to a specific woman. And she's going to have a pitcher. Now, is he really laying it down for God? And you see what he is to the woman that, that has the picture. God, I want you to bring me to that woman that's carrying the picture. And when you bring me to that woman that's carrying the picture, I want to put some fleece out.
to be sure that that's the one you want. This is a serious prayer. If I bring home the wrong woman in this case, Isaac's life is all messed up. Book of Proverbs. I pray thee that I may drink. You speak, this is what you would be speaking to the woman. And she shall dr say drink. God, I want her to say drink when I ask her a question. I don't want her to say do it yourself. I'm not going to serve a man. Drink. And I will give thy camels drink also. She's also not going to say, oh, here, here's a drink. But I'm going to take care of your camels, sir. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Look at that. The servant of Abraham says that Isaac is a servant of God. And thereby shall I know that thou, God, has shown kindness unto my master. Nothing about the Holy Spirit. Jesus told him, the Holy Spirit does not want you to worship him. The Holy Spirit does not want you to give him credit. The Holy Spirit does not even want you to sing hymns to him. Jesus told us that. In the Gospel of John. He's not there for his own witness. He's there to teach and remember I, Jesus Christ. And yet the church fails by giving the Holy Spirit, all, all the, uh, you know, the, the him, the charismatic church messes it all by giving the Holy Spirit all the credit. When Jesus was baptized, there is Jesus Christ. He's in the water. He's wet. God speaks from heaven. This is my well, well this is my well beloved son. Here he him, something like that. And the Holy Spirit just comes down as, as a dove. And does he even really make a, a presence? Is There's that voice from God from heaven. And there is the Son. The Holy Spirit just comes down. Two people put too much on the Holy Spirit. And then again there are people who don't put it on. And it came to pass before he had done speaking. See. You can speak and pray. You don't necessarily have to. Pray to God. Speak to God. Carry a conversation on with God when it comes to your prayer life. Let it be personal. That behold, Rebecca, this first time Rebecca shows up, came out. Then you don't know if she was the only one. But according to John chapter 4, there was only one woman. They say when the women come out to draw water, that's, um, no, it's in there. We read it. Rebecca came out, who was born of Bethuel, son of Micah, Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. Well, wow, isn't that interesting? Servant, yes, Abraham, I want you to go find a wife for my son of my kindred. And boom, Abraham's brother Nahor's daughter shows up. Eleven. The camel kneel down at the time that the women go out to draw water. One woman shows up and she happens to be in the family of Abraham of this whole city. It's not a quinky dinky. It's God working. It's God already answering this man's prayer as he's praying. Now let me let me state something here. I don't think we're going to do this chapter one night. Rebecca's coming out to do her family chores of getting water. What if that day she told her mother, I ain't going. I'm tired of this. I got my own life. I'm sick and tired of you guys telling me what to do. I'm going out somewhere else. But let me mention another woman in the Bible. God, you took my husband. I'm mad at you. All these people come praying to me all the time. And I pray and fast for them. You know what, God? I ain't going to the temple today. The heck with you. I ain't going. And Anna would have missed holding Jesus Christ in her arms. 
two remarkable women in the Bible. If Rebecca did not do her her childish chores, I don't mean childish, foolish, I mean her childish chores of her family, she would have never met the Holy Spirit that day. Ruth did. What I'm, what I'm saying here too is, is, is now about my family's life as far as the ministry. God, why do you want me to go get some fruit and vegetables at the farmer's market? I go to Walmart to get my... Why, why do you want me to go there for a minute? What the... Because I want you to go down there and I want you to hear the gospel. Really? I go down to that farmer's market every week and that idiot's down there preaching every week. I'm going to go somewhere else. Oh, no, you're not. Because it may be the time that Abraham's servant shows up and steps you on the shoulder and says, Hey, I got something for you. What if Ruth told, mentioned, what if Ruth told Naomi, you old Jew, you Jews don't have anything to do with us Moabites. I just married your son because he was a hunk and all that, and he's dead, and just like over, I'm, I'm gone. And guess what Ruth would have missed? Being mentioned in the line of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Can you imagine Ruth in the in the millennium? Can you imagine? I'm not saying I don't mean bragging as I mean as as boasting or anything. Can you just imagine she's walking around there and saying, "Hi, I'm the grandmother of Jesus. That's my grandson up there, and I'm a Moabite." You see that King David? Because David is going to be prince, while Jesus Christ is king. It's going to be Jesus Christ and David ruling the land. Can you imagine Ruth is saying, that? "Hey, that's my grandson too." What we're all for is, she's in hell. Children, do what you're supposed to do. It do it every time you're supposed to, because you don't know when you're going to miss a blessing if you don't do it. Rebecca came out and was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. So that would make niece, nephew, something like that. And her picture upon her shoulder. Well, there's the damsel with the preacher. Rebecca, girls out there, don't go flop your body for another man. Be a damsel. Be clean. Paul says we are vessels. We're to be clean before the one that purchased us. She's carrying a vessel. She herself is clean. I guarantee that picture she's carrying is clean. I don't care if she's bringing water to wash the babies or wash the pot and pans. It's still to be clean. Or maybe even drinking water. We don't know. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. Now this is the Holy Spirit going out in the world looking for the bride of Christ. And he calls that point, the woman is fair. She has not even met Jesus yet. Can you imagine what God the Father calls us when we come to Jesus Christ? And after that, we're judged, our sins are clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then when we are judged at the, at the judgment seat of Christ, whatever is filthiness in us is burnt up. And then we are given a new body if we earn crowns and the right to the millennial inheritance. Can you imagine after the judgment seat of Christ what God thinks about us? The actual bride of Jesus Christ. She went down to the well. So it's down. She gotta go down. What I do? She was look upon a virgin. I already said about a virgin. Be clean. Neither had any man known her. So there's a Bible definition of virgin. You don't need a dictionary. There it is. Adam knew his wife. Now, now you know what's been on back there. Now you know what's going on here. She has known nobody. She went down to the well. She has to go down. You know what the problem with going down with an empty pitcher on your shoulder? Is you got to come back up with a full pitcher. And water is heavy. And filled her pitcher and came up. So she goes down. He's not exactly at the well then. 
She goes down, fills that pitcher up, and he, she's on her way back up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. Now, she could have had all kinds of responses. And she said, Drink. That's what, that's what the prayer, my Lord. And she hasted, she hurried, and let down her pitcher. Now, I don't know. I, I'm getting affected. That, that's a heavy pitcher. I don't know. Upon her hand and gave him drink. All right? So he gets his drink of water. He's not really, well, he could be thirsty, but that, that's part of his prayer. That's his fleece. And when she had done giving him drink, that's all she was asked now. All she was asked to give the guy a drink. She said, I will draw water for thy camels. Off. Who told her to get water for the camels? No, that was her. That is Rebecca. Rebecca is not only am I going to take care of you, give you what you... I'm going to do more than what you ask. But I'm just saying, Rebecca's the type of girl... When she's told to do something, she finishes the job all the way through. This woman is a worker. She didn't have to mention anything about the camels. But, if, hey, if the man is thirsty, so is the camel. I'm going to give them. Remember, she had to go down to the well, come back, go down, come back. I will draw water for thy camels also until they have been drunk, drinking, done drinking. It was on her own merit. Camels can drink 20 to 30 gallons of water each. She would have to give between 200 to 300 gallons of water to feed them, to give those camels drink. Now, if she had a small pitcher, she had a lot of work to do. If she had a large pitcher, she had a heavy work to do. And remember, she said, I will water your camels also by her own merit, by her own works. This is going to impress Abraham's servant. <coughs> because she's a hard worker for the servant. She's a hard worker for Isaac. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for the camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough. So there are already troughs there for animals. This well, you have to go down and come back, go down, come back, go down. And ran. She is on her feet doing Again unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man wondered at, his, at her, held his peace. He says, watching her. To wit, that means to know, whether the Lord had, pros, had made his journey prosperous or not. He's looking at this woman like, is she to answer the prayer? Because he remembers, I mean, an old place, if she don't want to come, and he's probably thinking, man, this woman is a worker. She, she, she's a virtuous woman. She's clean. Oh, let her not say no. <laughs> and it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shuck of weight. Perverted Bibles say that this is a nose ring. You open up a perverted Bible, it will say nose ring. Or in the nose, something like that. I don't know why. And two bracelets. Let's get this. For her hands. When have you ever seen a woman wear a bracelet on her hands? The Bible definition of a wrist is also your hand. Because that's where women wear bracelets. And that could be quite possibly where the nails went into Jesus' hands. In the wrist. Scripture with scripture. There it is. 
of 10 shekels weight of gold. Remember, Abraham's loaded. And we don't know what the stand of this family is. But the Rebecca, I mean, and he's paying her for her service to him and the camels. That's what he's doing. There's no mention of, you know, you're going to be the bride of Isaac. Is When somebody does work for you, you are obligated to pay them. And this is the payment for doing all that hard work. And he said, Whose daughter art thou? He just wants to know. Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethu, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. He tells him exactly who he is. Now this is ringing in, in the servant's ears right now. Wow, that's Abraham's family. Ooh, wee, this is a hard worker. She's done everything I told her to do. And... and, and she said, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender, that's needs, enough to room, and room to lodge in. The Christian is to have room for the Holy Spirit to come in and live with him. Now, I was just telling my wife today, isn't it funny? The Bible says that there was no room for Jesus at the end. And I wonder why it says in and not ends. But that will be when we get to Luke. But here is room for the Holy Spirit. And when you put room for the Holy Spirit in your life, you're going to meet Isaac, and then you will become his bride. How do you not become a Christian? This man is talking to you. He says, no, I ain't got no room for you. I, I got my religion. I'm an atheist. I don't believe. I'm good. Jesus wouldn't do what you're doing. And don't even say you read. I, I, I always want to tell do you read your Bible when somebody says that one? And they'll say yes. And, you know, you just, I won't say it because I know you're going to make yourself a liar. But as far as a person who does not know Christ yet, when he says to God, serve it, yeah, hey, come on in. Ooh, wait, boy, you're biting the Holy Spirit of God in. I guarantee, I don't know what, uh, seven days from 21, um, 14, April 14th, 1987, on a Sunday morning, I told the Holy Spirit, come on in. I got room for you. Seven days later, if not during that week, because you don't have to necessarily, I've heard the word, word preach on Sunday morning, but... Seven days later, a Christian came to me with an open Bible. And I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. On Sunday, I told the Holy Spirit, come on in. You can dwell. Boy, did the conviction come. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. Now, this is a type of Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit turns to God the Father. Wow, we got one. And when they get saved, the Bible says all the angels in heaven rejoice. Not because you threw a football. Not because you, you got an enemy. But because here is somebody turning to God. And he said, Blessed, happy, be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not left destitute my master of his mercy and his, and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of of my master's bread. All right, here's Abraham's family. I couldn't find him with a GPS. This, he starts off this with praying God, God, is this the woman? Please send me the right woman. Blah 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 blah. Here's the fleet. Now he's thanking God. He's not forgetful to thank God for the answer prayer. Now watch this. Now watch it. If you don't think this is Jesus Christ, what? Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not left destitute my master of his mercy, of his truth. All right, you don't get that one yet? And I being in the way. Does that remind you of a Bible verse? John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. 
That is remarkable. The servant is quoted in John 14, 6, even before John 14, 6 is written to an unsaved girl, and he's praying to God for the blessings of this meeting. That's remarkable. I, I, I say John 14, 6 every time I preach. And the damsel ran. Ah! No. <laughs> You know why she's running? She's running to make to tell her family that here's this person and she's going to go run and make room for this guy. And told them of her mother's house these things. She goes back and tells mom and dad, hey, this is what just happened to me. They're coming. Make room. And Rebecca had a brother. Oh, boy. Shoo. We'll meet Laban again. What This guy. His name was Laban. Can I tell you something? And my wife, uh, since she's joined our ministry and all that, she's seen, she's seen a Laban when we're dealing with people. When you see the Holy Spirit work on someone's heart, you've seen, a, she has seen, I have seen a Laban come walking up. You don't want Laban to show up. And Laban ran out onto the men, onto the well. And it came to pass when he, Laban, saw the earrings and the bracelets upon her sister's hands. I guess Rebecca don't know how to wear jewelry. Because if she was wearing it on her hands, she wouldn't be able to carry that, that picture, which I guarantee she's carrying. And when he had heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, Thus spank the man unto me, and she said everything that happened. And he came unto the man, behold, he stood by the camels at the well. See, they stayed right where they're going. They're not going to follow this woman home and, and, you know, stalk her. She's going to wait. They're going to wait for her to go home and get her family proper because she can't speak for her father. She can't speak for her mother. She's going to say, hey, listen, guys, I just had something very weird happen to me at the well today. And there's a bunch of people who need a, a, a place to lodge. I told them there's room, but I didn't tell them to come. And he said, come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Now, Laban's blessing is the earrings and the bracelets and the gold. That's what's making Laban happen. We'll see that with Jacob later. But that's Laban. But you know what make you know what word blessed means according to Leah? I forget which son it was, but blessed means happy. I think it's Asher. It's to be happy. You know what makes the Lord happy today is when that Holy Spirit comes back to God and says, We got one. We got a lost sheep and they're coming home. You just hold those angels for just just hold those angels for a moment because they have not come to Christ yet, but they're on their way. And the Gospel of John is in this book. The Gospel of Luke is in this book. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house. No, no you're not. Re uh, Rebecca's doing it. But she's doing the work of the family. So he that tarries by the stuff gets the reward also. Rebecca's getting the work done, but her, her, her brother and her father are getting the the reward. Women, you do your housework chores and all that. If your husband goes out and serves the Lord, you're going to be blessed. You're going to get the same reward. And the, man, and the men came into the house and ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender unto the camels. He provenders its food and, and watered and watered to wash his feet. Oh, <laughs> there's Jesus again. Notice the master is feeding his, I mean, the, the servant is feeding and taking care of the master's stuff before he takes care of himself. The Holy Spirit does not want worship. The Holy Spirit does not want the praise. He wants it to God. And there was set meat before him to eat. 
For he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, speak on. All right, here's the food. Christian minister, they put a meal before me. We operate a soup kitchen. You tell the mission of God the Father before you sit down and have a meal. There it is. I'm not going to do anything else. We got, listen, here it is. Here's Cornelius' house. <laughs> See that? Cornelius' house. Here's Peter. We got everybody in this house right now. We got your attention. We're not going to ruin the gospel by having a meal. We're going to now everybody's attention. Everybody, ooh and ah. Now we're going to present Isaac, Jesus Christ. How's that? How's that for an audience? And then afterwards, he's going to, have, I don't even think he mentions he eats. But we're going to stop right there. There's just too much. Because we're going to recap what goes on, but what the Holy Spirit does. This is a remarkable. And you got the picture. Let's look what, let's look what happens here. 22, we got Calvary. Isaac was supposed to be offered, but we know the ram was offered instead. They're at Calvary. They're at Jerusalem. And there is a sacrifice. 23, the mother dies. There's a burying ground. And 24, the Holy Spirit is sent out. Go get one. Go get her. Go get the bride of Christ. And what we see here matches the Gospels. It matches the book of Acts. It's remarkable. They're not Jews yet. Well, they're Jews, but they're not Jews yet. Yep. Now that's that happens at the end. Now I can't put where Sarah fits because I don't want to say there is a mother of God. I don't want to say Mary or anything like that because that's not true. But Isaac's mother dies, and then he gets a bride. I don't know. It's just remarkable. We'll pick this up. Lord willing, a couple days.